abusive and controlling men confronted. He says Charity is his dog. He calls you a dog, but you love him. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. Sit Just prove. She does whatever the hell I tell her to do. Bob demands to be called <laughs> Big Daddy. God made men first. Gene is my property. All these women out here, hookers. Every one of them. How do you feel putting your hands on her and choking? I feel pretty good when I'm doing it. What's your problem? I'm tired of it, Bob. What oh, I tell you? I'm not this man controls Latoya and their three daughters. I will make sure all three of my daughters obey. He controls your sex life. I have to give it to him when he wants it. We have a lot in store for these men. He choked my daughter. He choked her. But one of them can't handle it. I'm not going Mike, in there, man. Mike, that's what she said. I'm not going in about, there. An unbelievable hour of Mari starts now. This is Regina. Now backstage is her boyfriend, Bob. Bob demands to be called Big Daddy. You see, you see, Big Daddy wakes Regina up at 4 o'clock in the morning to cut his toenails and cook him breakfast. Big Daddy monitors Regina when she takes a shower. Big Daddy forces Regina to have sex with him whenever he wants. And that's just the beginning. Listen to their story. Four years of endless control. My house is my domain. Gina's my property. And I'm her big daddy. Gina must trim my toenails, trim my eyebrows, and give me sex on demand. Four years of name calling. She's a disgusting hooker, and she's nothing without <laughs> me. And four years of physical abuse. I grab her by the hair, I drag her down the hall, and I choke her. The control and abuse started the moment Regina met her boyfriend, Bob. As soon as I met Bob, I thought it was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me until the control started. He makes me call him Big Daddy, and he calls me a whore and a hooker in front of all of my friends, and it just breaks my heart. I don't know how much longer I can take it. Gina can cry all she wants, but she knows all women are terrorists. Gina terrorizes me every day because she thinks she's equal to me. No woman will ever be equal to a man, ever. He, by the way, is backstage. He cannot hear us. Do you really want to call him Big Daddy? He's not very big, no. He's not very big. <laughs> controls in every way. Yeah, I can't even talk when he's around. What? I can't even talk. What does around that mean? You that means talk? whatever I say, it's wrong, so he tells me to shut the oh. and then I'm oh. stupid. Has he called you a hooker? He calls me, that's what he calls me all the time, and all my friends are hookers, and if I'm. All have, women are hookers. All women are hookers. To him. <laughs> and the only ones, the only ones not hookers are ones that are not old enough to be hookers yet. And he calls all my friends hookers. And every woman is property. Every woman. Can you do this to, to can you do this to Bob, aka Big Daddy? Can you say to him, dear, I'm going in to take a shower? Oh, I can go take a shower, but he's gotta watch or he comes in there and jerks the door open while I'm peeing. Why? He thinks I'm standing at the window with all my clothes off showing people my body at the window. And I wouldn't do that. I love him. I really love him. I don't know why. He's not like that every day. Just like, like once a month or twice a month. He's nice, you know. Once a month, he's nice. This is a guy who likes bologna sandwiches, right? Well, a lot of oh us like god. bologna sandwiches, right? Oh my god. What happened one day? I have to get up in the morning and make his lunches for all his friends when they go to work. So I get up at four o'clock. And I make his lunch for all his friends, and they go lay brick. Okay, and uh, one day they had to go check on a job, so the sandwiches were left there. Well, two of the laborers and then uh, another laborer came in later on, but I let them go ahead and eat the bologna sandwiches. 
oh my God, he came home and he chased me down the street. He almost bit my finger off. Oh. He tackled me and he almost bit my finger off because I gave away the bologna sandwiches. It was in the paper. Oh. In the paper? They put it in the paper. Everybody laughed at me. It was horrible. So everybody in town knew? Knew. He told the police that he should have bit the off. No. Was he arrested? Uh, yeah, but not for that, because I, I didn't press charges. I went and, and they asked me what happened, and I told them I was Why did wasn't. you press charges? I don't know. You have to cut his toenails. Mm -hmm. You have to give him like a man. Yeah. And what is this so-called happy plate? Oh, I have to eat all my food, because if I get too skinny, people want to have sex with me. That's his, the way his brain works? Yeah, he says so I... So he makes yourself when you don't even want to? Yeah. It makes me so insecure that I don't even want to have sex anymore. I mean, it's just like a job. Because you have to have sex, though, when he wants it, right? Anytime he wants. It don't matter if I'm, I'm driving gonna bring down him out the road. I'm, I'm going to bring him out here now. Listen to this, everybody. Gina, this is my world, a man's world. For 48 years, I've been controlling my women, and I'm not going to stop with you. I own you. And I'm your big daddy. What I say goes, so don't even think about getting out of line today. God made men first. Women are property. Men are rulers. Anyone that doesn't think women are hooker trash can kiss my rosy red You want me to call you Bob? You want me to call you Big Daddy? You call me Bob more. I can call you Bob. Yes, sir. Bob, you see how upset she is? Yes, sir. You know why? No, I don't know why. You don't know why? No. It's because of the way you treat her. I treat her fine. You do? Yeah. You like biting, trying to bite off her finger? When she gives my baloney away, hell yeah. <laughs> women out here hookers? Every one of them. Except... Yeah. You, 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 you. Why do that? Because they're all out to get you. Wait, 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 let me ask you this. You love your mother? I love my mother. You think your mother was a hooker? No, sir. Well, oh, your mother was. No. But everybody else is. And not my daughter. And not your daughter. Right. But everybody else is. Every Else they ought to be home taking care of the man. Why do you like her calling me Big Dad? Because that's my name. I am the Big Dad. You're so secure in your relationship that you have to go in and watch her take a shower because you think she's showing off to I, somebody? Yeah, i tell you the truth. I think she might be flashing people out there. Really? Yeah. A lot of people would say, one of the reasons the way you act is because you're so insecure, not because... Yeah. No! Y'all need to go home. Cook some supper for your old man. Let me ask Clean you your that. house. Why do you make her cut your toenails? Because that's her job. That's not her job. Because I'm the big daddy. That's not her job. Yes. You put your hands on her. How do, how, how do you feel putting your hands on her and choking her? I feel pretty good when I'm doing it. Hey, I feel good. Hey, hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you're so secure, why do you stuff her with food so that she won't look appealing to other people? 
Why do you do that? She don't need to be out there looking good. She needs to be at the house taking care of me. But if you were secure, if you were secure, you would want her to look fabulous. What is wrong with you? I'm secure. <laughs> What's your problem? What's I'm her problem? I'm tired of it, Bob. What's You're tired her? of what? I'm tired of it, Bob. You're supposed to call me Big Dan. The street. Guess I don't what? Care. Well, I hit the road. Again. I think, Regina, let's draw a line right from this day forward. What are you going to call him? Bob. Big Daddy! Oh, you! You! Come on! We're after this. Y'all need to shut the hell down! Every damn one of them! Why? A big daddy! He said charity is his dog. You a dog, but you love him. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. Sit your no. on the floor like a dog. Sit down. Sit down. What did you do? She does whatever the hell I tell her to do. We have a lot in store for these men. He choked my daughter. He choked her. But one of them can't handle it. I'm not going said, in Mike. there, man. Mike, that's what she said. I'm too. not going in there. Sit your on the floor no. like a dog. Abusive and controlling men confronted. Who's a dog? I ain't no dog. I'm a pet boy. Now, Charity's fiance of one year, Michael. That's who we're gonna deal with now. He says all women are dogs. Dogs. Charity is his dog. He brags about making Charity sit on the floor because he didn't approve of her makeup. He sits there and is proud that he locks her in the bedroom when she came home late. And when she doesn't cook his food the way he likes her, he chokes her. <laughs> like maybe that's happened 20 times. Watch. All women should be barefoot, pregnant, in the kitchen, cooking and giving us sex anytime we want, period. All women are damn dogs. They need to be trained like dogs. If I tell Cherry to sit her ass on the floor like a damn dog, you best believe she's gonna sit her ass on the floor like a dog, or else these hands will be around her damn neck. If I feel Cherry disrespects me, I call a fat, nasty bitch, just like the rest of the women in the world are. I don't care that Cherry was upset on Mother's Day because her mother's passed. Bottom line, she came home late. So I threw her clothes over the balcony. When I found out Charity left my house without permission, I locked her ass in the bedroom for eight hours. I was taught that a man's supposed to control a woman, so any woman that feels like they should step up to me needs her ass beat. Tough guy. Welcome to Mr. Tough Guy. Charity, you're a dog. He calls you a dog. Yeah. After being so told, after being told that so many times, I start to believe it. Do you like sit on the floor in front of him and things like that? Mm -hmm. This is a guy who you tattooed his name in your neck? Yeah, he told me, he told me if I was to do it, it would prove my love for him. Really? He's like your master? Yeah. Oh. So on Mother's Day, your mother had passed. Yeah, my mom passed about three and a half years ago. So you went to see your father, right? Aww. Yeah, I went to see my father. What happened? You know, I was supposed to be gone for only a couple of hours, you know? And when I got home an hour late, he was supposed to be at work at 9. And I got there around 9, 30, 9, 45. I found my clothes over the balcony. He threw them out? He threw my clothes over the balcony in the apartment in front of everybody. And all I could do was stand down there and wait for him to finish throwing my things so I could pick them back up and go back and put them in the closet. If he would allow that. Why didn't you just take your clothes and leave? <laughs> I love him. I love him. I love him. You love him. I love him. You, you love him, but he calls you fat and ugly every day. Yeah, he calls me fat and ugly every day. He tells me that nobody else is going to want me. But Except you love him. him. Yeah, I love him. Why do you think you love him? I don't. You know why? Because he's convinced you 
that you no, couldn't I'm love anybody much. else and nobody yeah. else would love you. That's what happened. <laughs> You're driving home in the middle of the night. How, what time was it? Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. He pushed you out of the car and left you. We just, we just got into a little argument and he just... He told me we stopped. I thought we were stopping at a red light. He told me to get the hell out of his car, and I didn't understand why. I begged with him. I pleaded with him to let me stay in the car. I didn't deserve this. He told me he didn't and he told me to get out. He opened the door, and he pushed me out, and I had to stand there for 45 minutes in the cold. I could have got raped. I, anything could have happened to me. I could have got murdered. How'd you get home? He, um... He came back. He said, I think you've had enough punishment for now, yeah. and he put me in the car. I he picked me back up and he was at But he plays that game all the time. He locked you in a room for eight hours. Yeah. Eight hours. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to meet him. I can't wait to meet this guy. This is what he had to say. Charity, quit your whining and moaning and groaning. I'm going to train you like a dog because that's what you are. I control everything about you. The way you dress, the way you do your hair, even our sex life. If you don't give me sex when I want it, this hand will be across your face. If I tell your ass to hop, skip, a jump, your ass better hop, skip, a jump. Don't, I'm gonna throw your ugly ass to the curb. Good luck finding another man as good as me. Here's Michael, everybody. Sit on the floor like a dog. Yeah, we want, you want to see us sit on the floor like a dog? Sit your ass on the floor. Sit your ass on the floor Stop. like a dog. No, I'm your man. That ain't your man. You don't listen to him. Sit your ass on that floor like a dog. Sit your ass Stop. down. No, sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Sit, your ass down. sit down. Just prove. She does whatever the hell I tell her to do. So that was it. You humiliated her in front of millions of she people. She does what I tell her to do. You just humiliated her in front she of millions of people. She does what I tell her to people. do. Okay in the morning. No, she won't be okay. Yes, she will. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. We're going to make it okay for her. Because <laughs> we're not going to continue this show. Dropped we'll we'll her off on a highway in the yep. middle of the night. Do it again. Yo, what, she Locked her up in a room for eight hours. That's what she get for disrespecting me. What? Not listening. Hey, wait a second. What Not do you listening. think you what do you think you do to her? Man, every I, moment of your every I, I don't disrespect her. I'm life. pregnant like a dog, training her like a dog. Oh. That's all I'm doing. Oh. Giving her a backbone. What she needs is a backbone. She needs to grow a backbone. You got some makeup on? You get some of it right here. No, 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 Wipe no. Off your no, face. No. Wipe that no. off your face. Don't you do it. Wipe it off. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. The problem is, the is, what's that more? You don't have any respect for yourself. I got respect. I got plenty of respect for me. No, you don't. Plenty for me. Plenty. I got plenty for me. That's all bravado. That's all plenty. air. I'm telling you right now. I got plenty of respect for me. You do? Yes, sir. Well, we'll find out when we come back. We'll find out how much respect you have for yourself. We'll be back right after this. He wants to be called King. He's beginning to train his three daughters to be subservient to me. I will make sure all three of my daughters obey. He controls your sex life. I have to give it to him when he wants it. We have a lot in store for these men. He choked my daughter. He choked her. But one of them can't handle it. I'm not going to see my girl in no casket, man. <laughs> and controlling men confronted. If you want
my bitch, you be trained right like she is. Yeah, what I said, you ain't hit no nothing. Hey, come to Tennessee, you'll see what's up. Come to Tennessee, you'll see what's up. I'll come to New York and put it down. I'll put it down to New York. Ain't no woman gonna put me in my place. Women on this earth ain't but dogs. If you ain't gonna put nothing in place, you're gonna get one of these right into your mouth. They ain't gonna be in the hospital. We have a big daddy here today. <laughs> and we and we have our next guest who's coming out here shortly who wants to be called King. Yeah! <laughs> King. Because it's Latoya's duty to call Anthony King. To serve him and obey him. This couple, this couple has three young girls. Three young girls. Guess what Anthony's doing? He's beginning to train his three daughters to be subservient to me. Listen to this. Anthony believes there's one reason why the economy is going to hell in a handbasket and is going straight downhill. You know why? He says. Because women started working. And ruined everything. Why? Every woman on earth should submit to a man. We are kings and we should be treated like royalty. I will make sure all three of my daughters obey their man as long as he's like me. I don't care if it's the 21st century. Throughout history, men have ran our country. Right now, our economy is messed up. Why? Because some dumbass women went out and got a job. I blame women for the economic disaster that we are in now. I'm a king, and she don't like it, she can go find a peasant on the street. He believes that. I can't believe that. I can't believe he can think like that about my girls. Latoya, you are a beautiful woman. Why are you putting up with that? I love Amori. You I love, love him. him, and I got my girls by him. I had three children by him. Does he refer to himself as the king? Yeah, he does. He's the king. And he says that in front of my girls. Now, when you get home working all these shifts, what happens? If he if he cooks, I have to come home and clean up the kitchen, clean up the house, get his get the girls stuff ready for the next day. What get does he do? Stuff ready. Goes to bed. Goes to bed. Does he ever get physical with you? He has. This is the man you love? Okay. He was well, different. He was different before. And it's, when, did it, when did it change? The more kids I had by him, it started changing. Now, he controls your sex life? Yes. I have to give it to him when he wants it. You're ready to leave. I'm, I'm in the midst of leaving right now. I yeah. have... This is what Anthony had to say, too. Watch. I was raised by a strong man and taught to be a king. And I'll be damned if you're going to disrespect me. Every man wants what I got, a woman that does what she's told. This king rules with an iron fist. If you don't like the way I control you, you can hit the road. And that's what I'm doing. Here's I'm Anthony. Here. I can see in her eyes. This is what you don't know, Anthony. She's about to leave you. Yeah. You, know you have this beautiful woman as a partner. You have these beautiful girls for daughters.
she is about to leave you. Whatever I say goes, if she gonna leave, she gonna leave. So I love, I love the way you have played economist and figured out why we're going to hell in a handbasket with the stock market and everything. It's all because of women's going to work. They should stay home, stay yeah. home. You're teaching your daughters to be subservient to men. If the man is like me and take care of his business, then that's what they're going to have to do. Oh, now, man, you want Anthony. that for our kids? You want that for our daughters? Okay, Anthony, you are about to lose your woman. Yeah. She's about to stay with a king. We'll be back right after this. Sean broke down my daughter's door, and he shot my baby multiple times. He took her from her children. <laughs> he choked my daughter. He choked her. Get out. Michael's incredible moment of truth. Right now, baby. I'm not going said, in Mike. there, baby. Mike, that's what she said. I'm not going in about, there. Abusive and controlling men confronted. So obviously, you know, we've been talking to men who say they have the authority <laughs> to control and abuse their women. My next guest, Stephanie, knows all too well what can happen to a woman in a controlling, abusive relationship like this. I want you to take a look at Stephanie's 31-year-old daughter, Tiffany, during happier times. Now take a look at a crime scene photo of Tiffany the day she was murdered. Oh, Murdered by her controlling and abusive ex-boyfriend. This is Stephanie's story. Like many mothers, Stephanie had no idea her daughter Tiffany was in a controlling and abusive relationship. I couldn't believe Sean was abusing my daughter Tiffany for four and a half years. It made me sick. I know Sean choked her in the bathroom so she was unconscious while she had her daughter in her arms. On June 17th, 2007, Sean broke down my daughter's door, and he shot my baby multiple times, shooting her and killing her, and he turned the gun on himself. <laughs> Since that fateful day, Stephanie has had to bear the pain of losing her daughter to a controlling boyfriend. I miss my daughter. <laughs> Wish I could see her face again. <laughs> When Sean killed her, he took away everything. He took her from her children. He didn't have to kill her. He didn't have to shoot her. He didn't have to take her. Everybody, please welcome Stephanie. Here she is. You've been backstage. Yes. You've been listening to all this, haven't you? Stephanie? Yes. Right? Yes. Sound familiar? Yes. Really? Yes. You want to tell these How kids? How dare y'all? How can y'all do that? You got a mother. You have a mother. You got three babies. My daughter had four. You understand? You don't have to sit on the floor and for no man. These three women. Could end up like your daughter. Yes. They say they love you, they don't. What is love? I they don't put nothing. their hands mm. on these women. He choked my daughter while she was holding her baby in the bathroom. He choked her. Where are those babies now? I have the two girls and the boys with their father. Tomorrow marks 16 months, my daughter will be gone. I go tomorrow to put flowers on my baby's grave. Mm. <laughs> but now you're going to play a role here today. Yes. You're going to help these women. Yes. All right? Yes. They're either going to have these men change, or you're going to tell them to do what? Get out. You don't have a mother. I speak for your mother. You don't have no mother. You don't have no mother. We've got some more help for you. We have called in our friend, motivational speaker, author, 
of To Pose a Threat, My Rite of Passage, Raphael B. Johnson. Welcome, Raphael. An all points bulletin has just been released because the officials from the town that you're from say they're missing a short man Napoleon complex idiot. Hell yeah! Sit down. No. How you gonna demean your woman? How you gonna belittle your woman? How you gonna make her feel low? That's supposed to be your woman. But you've been in this relationship for four years, man. You haven't even stepped up to the plate. Because for 50 years, you almost 50 years old, and the best thing that you can say for yourself is that you're somebody's boyfriend. Come on, man. <laughs> Anthony, I'm impressed, man. I'm impressed because the first time in my life, I've never seen such a small mind and such a big old head. <laughs> Your queen? Your queen? I hate to see what your enemy is like, man. That's not your queen, man. Let me tell you what she is. She's undeserved kindness to you because through those three babies, she's allowed you to live on from generation to generation. She's more than your queen. You owe her, man. You owe her. A king, that's, that's what you're striving to become. You don't even know a king or queen. You never even seen a king or queen. How are you gonna be and measure yourself to that which you never seen before? You should try, strive to be a man. Uh, being a man means showing compassion, being responsible, being accountable, paying bills, taking care of those individuals that are under you. Hold on, hold on. Being a man. There's a provisional aspect of being a man. Being a man, you have to be a protector, a nurturer, a provider, a comforter. You have to be a maintainer, a sustainer, and a preserver. Being a man means that sometimes you gotta change some diapers. Trust me, I'm a man, I change diapers. You need to do some soul searching, maybe you'll find one. A dog, man? What you got for me? A you dog? You say gonna change your, your, mind, your mind is not as much twisted as it is broken. You hear me? You ain't talk about nothing. Seriously, man. Who I can't you? tell you. Who are you? you can write a book. Who are you? Smart. Who are you? Can you last a day in my smart. shoes, man. Let me tell you something. I can something. last day in anything. You can anything, last a day in, in my shoes, man. Let me tell you something. Day if that's your world. dog, if that is your dog, and you I treat see. her like I that, then what are you, man? I call it half What are you? You gotta change the dynamics, man. You gotta change it, man. Let me say this to the women, more. Let me let me say this. The violence is influenced by basically how you look at yourself. Because if you see yourself as a hooker, if you see yourself as a bitch and some queen that get treated like a dog, if you see yourself as a fat, ugly squabble, that's, that's what you're gonna be treated as. And the men that's in your life, that's how they're gonna see you. So my next guest, along with Raphael, and by the way, Stephanie is gonna talk to the women. We've got plans here for everybody, <coughs> but for the guy, I just want to welcome our next guest, our special ops expert, Dave Vitale. Like you have got nothing to say. So what are you, you gonna you do with show me I ain't You know what? You. Take you. We're gonna show you. I'm gonna give you guys a gift. I'm gonna give you the gift of seeing into your future. You're gonna see where everything is going. One thing, guys, I gotta give it to you. At least you're here. You know there's something wrong right. in your relationships. So we're gonna take them to a special place that maybe will give them the first step to changing. Absolutely. Raphael, you and Dave are gonna take them, and Stephanie, you're gonna deal with the women. Thank you all so much, guys. Stand up here. Let's go. Walk right out of here. We have a lot in store for these men. I love you, baby. But one of them can't handle it. Leave me alone, Rob. I've not been to see my girl in no casket, man. <laughs> Mari. and controlling men confronted. Changing the attitudes of these controlling men was going to take an incredible amount of work. But to start off, we had Stephanie sit down with the women and show them exactly what domestic violence can lead to. This is a quilt, a symbolization of Tiffany. It's 
her pictures. She liked football. She liked guitars. She didn't die in vain for every one of us that you say. She didn't die in vain. I won't forget, I promise. I don't want that to be me. Thank you so much. I appreciate a whole lot that you shared everything that you shared with us and I love you for it. <laughs> And I'll never, ever forget you. I'll never forget you. Next, it was time for the men to have an extreme close-up look at how one abusive relationship ended in tragedy. Bob, you know who this is, and you know what happened to her daughter. Bob, take a look at this. Her man did this to her, the same one who said he loved her. This is real, man. He took her daughter's life. <laughs> Domestic violence, man. These controlled women all agreed to pose motionless in an actual coffin in an attempt to scare their men straight. Dave Vitale was going to show Bob what can happen when physical abuse goes too far. I love you, baby. I'm so sorry I ever hurt you, treated you bad. I love you. I love you. And Michael's incredible moment of truth. I'm not going said, in Mike. there, man. Mike, that's what she said. I'm too. not going what in there. Sit your on the floor no. like a dog. No. Abusive and controlling men confronted. Earlier, we all saw that Anthony was proud of controlling Latoya and their three daughters. Could this life-changing lesson make him a different man at home? Anthony, look at this. That's her daughter, man. She never saw it coming, man. That ain't it. <laughs> he shot her and he shot himself. Domestic violence, man. The message seemed to be getting through, but we still needed to show Anthony one more thing. You're gonna see something that you never wanna see. What would it be like without her? If you were to come home and she was gone? I love you, baby. I didn't know I was hurting you that much. Now I know, baby. Listen to me, every last word you said. No more being controlling. No more, you know. I just want to no be more yelling. Equal, that's all. I'm changing. I promise. There was one man left to change. Michael, who called Charity his dog. If you went too far, you realize you could have killed this girl. Let you me. got a man up, man. You got a man up. You need right to do now. this for yourself. I don't want to do it. I know you don't want, want to. She didn't, she didn't want to be out there in the at cold, night Mike. At four in the morning, baby. I don't want to do like, it, baby. No. Like she didn't want to do it, baby. I'm not going in there, man. Mike, that's what she said. I'm not going in there. I'm not going to see my girl in no casket, man. <laughs> Michael's incredible moment of truth is next. Leave me alone right now, baby. and controlling men confronted. Dave and Raphael convinced Michael to confront his fears and see the painful image of Charity laying in a coffin. I'm doing this to help you. I can't do it, baby. You're, you've done it. You're right. here, bro. You're here. You want to change. You want to be a better man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Forgive me for real, dog. No. This sad, man. Okay. Nobody think about me right now. Let's get her out of this. I'm sorry. All right, man. Come on, don't walk out. Come on, come on. Baby. Come on, baby. Come on baby. Leave me alone right now, baby. You good, man. Take baby, your wife. You don't, good. Walk don't, don't, don't walk out on her. Don't walk out on her. You walk, you walk with her. You go with her. You go with her. I love you. You know, you need to change, baby. Until next time, America. Not the fuck.